Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. I look skinny from this angle. If you're new here, my name is Angel and apparently we read fan fiction on here and that's what we're doing today. If you're not new here, thank you so much for returning and I'm giving you exactly what you want. More Colby Brock fan fiction. So we are reading the same story that we started reading last week, which was Psycho, a Colby Brock fan fiction. And we are going to jump right into chapter five. I wake up to the sound of Colby's voice telling me to wake up. Hey, come back home, please. I'm sorry. He says calmly. Fine. I said, we get in the car together and I decide to fall asleep. Minutes passed by and I feel a pair of hands on my body carrying me. I woke up in Colby's room with the same clothes on as last night. I feel disgusting. I decided to take a shower to relax myself. One hour later, I hear feet running up the steps and Colby slamming into the room in full panic mode. They're looking for you, says Colby. What? What are you talking about? I said, full of confusion. Follow me. I get up and follow Colby downstairs. The whole house is in the living room watching the news. Is this you, Emma? Corey asked. I looked at the TV just to see something terrible. The guards from the asylum are searching for me. I never thought that they would come back for me. What is going on? Okay, am I the only one that's confused? I could have swore in the first chapter they were visiting an abandoned asylum, but she was there. So that doesn't make any sense. OMG, no, I, it can't be. I'm scared of what's going to happen. Emma, should I tell them? Colby asked me. Sure, I said, still confused. Colby tells the house about me being in the asylum and how I'm okay now. Police are searching for a girl with the name of Emma. If you see her, call the police immediately, the TV says. I go full panic mode, shaking with fear, not knowing what is about to happen to me. Emma, relax. You're safe here. Just don't go out too much, Colby stated. Okay, I say with a shaky voice. I go back upstairs to get things off my mind. I slowly start to drift off to sleep. Nightmare. Everywhere I go, they follow me, hitting me, kicking me, putting me on drugs, tranquilizing me. I can't do it. This place drives me more insane than I already am blackouts. I feel empty when I go there. Stop. No, please. It hurts. I scream and beg for them to stop. The handcuffs are always tight on my wrist. End. I wake up screaming from the nightmare, not wanting to go back. Colby jumps up and hugs me, slowly but surely calming me down. Shh, everything is going to be okay. Please calm down, he says soothingly. I love his voice. Same. Later that day, we decide to go out to Tender Greens, completely forgetting about the search for me. We arrived at Tender Greens and order our food. I get a lot of weird stares for some reason, but I didn't care. Once our food arrived, Colby and I decided to talk about random things. In the middle of our conversation, we hear sirens from outside, police officers running inside searching for someone. That's when it hit me. The police are searching for me. There she is, over there, yells the police. They come running towards me. I look at Colby, trying to tell them to stop, only to get pushed back and pinned to the chairs. The police grab me and try to pull me out. I try my best to get away, screaming and crying, begging for them to stop. I manage to get out of the police's grip, but they get two police officers to hold me. My body goes weak for some reason. I'm drained. Colby screaming out my name, begging for them to stop. I wake up inside of a weird place I can't recognize. I have on handcuffs behind my back. I look out of the cell and, what? It's not a prison, nor an asylum. I don't know where I am. I open my cell. It's oddly unlocked. I go out to the main desk and look at the mean looking girl. What do you want? The woman says. Why am I here? I asked her, not caring about where I was. You're here because you escaped the asylum and we wanted to keep you here for a day so that we know you're okay, states the woman. So I'm leaving tomorrow. I was rudely interrupted by the woman. Yes, you're leaving tomorrow. Jesus, you asked too many questions. I try my best not to yell back at her so I don't stay longer. I decided to go back to my cell and just stay there. I wanted to leave. I wake to the guards telling me to get ready to leave and that someone was outside to pick me up. I can't explain how happy I am to leave this place. One thing is, is that my anger is getting worse and I just didn't tell anyone. All I did was punch and scream into my pillow. I walk out and see Colby on his phone, resting his right arm on the car. He looks up at me and we make eye contact. I run and jump into his arms, happy to be back with him. We make it back to the house and that same dog, Navi, growls and barks at me. I'm used to it, but I still hate it. I go up into their room and take a shower. It feels great not to be at that place anymore. I just have to control my anger. Here's my theory. I think she's a ghost. I can't prove it, but that's what I think. Chapter six, three weeks later. If you didn't know, Emma and Colby are dating now. Good morning, Emma, says Colby. Good morning, Colby, you say in a sleepy voice. 
You get up and took a shower. After you got out, you dressed into a cute little outfit. Colby looks at you confused. Where are you going? He asked. I'm going to go hang out with Devin and Kat today. We're going to the amusement park, I said with a smile. I have to leave in about 30 minutes. Okay, well, I hope you have fun, he said in a sarcastic voice. I felt like he was going to miss me a lot, but I haven't hung out with the girls in a while. Minutes later. Colby, we're leaving, I shout from downstairs. Okay, bye, I love you, he yells. I tell him I love him too and we leave. We were gone for about six or seven hours because we went to get food before and after we went to the park. We had a lot of fun together and I want a decent sized teddy bear. We were on our way back home and we were all jamming out to music. We make it to the house and go our own ways. The house was oddly quiet, but it was only eight, so I'm pretty confused. I quietly go up the stairs, cautious to wake anyone up. I go to Colby and I's shared room and stop at the door, hearing weird noises. I put my ear up to the door and hear another girl's voice. I just thought it was another prank, so I walked in. Ha ha, very funny. Quickly stopped myself. Colby and some random girl were making out in front of my eyes. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I tried to not cry, so I decided to just leave. I quickly run out of the house and go to the gas station. I'm full of confusion, frustration, and sadness. Why would he do that? Does he not love me anymore? I asked myself, why does every story make Colby out to be such like a little player? It breaks my heart and I can't handle it. A while passes by, so I decided to get up face stained with tears and go to the house and get my things so I can stay in a hotel. I make it to the house and quickly run upstairs to get my things. Colby must have heard me enter because as I was leaving with my things, he was at the bottom of the stairs. Emma, I'm sorry I cut him off. Enough, Colby. I don't want to hear it. I'm leaving and I'm coming back when I want to. Don't rush me. I don't want to hear any type of apology because you know what I've been through. Goodbye. I said, tearing up. Please, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, he said, trying to apologize. You didn't mean to? That makes no sense. True. I, bye, I said, storming out of the house. I get into the car, slamming the door. I speed to the closest hotel and check in. I could tell a lot of people were having a not so good day. I get on the elevator to go to my room until I run into this really cute guy. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to, I say, picking up my bag. No, it's okay. Hey, do you need help with that? The guy asked. No, it's okay. I got it. No, no, I'll help, he says. He seems sweet. He helped me with my things and we talk a little bit. His name is Nate and he is super sweet. We exchanged numbers and became closer as friends. A week passes by and me and Nate end up as good friends. I get a call from Nate. Hello, I ask. Hey, Emma, it's Nate, he says. Oh, what's up? I ask. Nothing really. I was just wondering if you had any plans today, he asked me. Yeah, I have to go back to my boyfriend's house. He kissed some other girl. That's why I'm here in the first place, I said sadly. Oh, that's awful. I'll come with you if you want. Yeah, of course you can, I said happily. Okay, I'll meet you at the lobby, he said. We both say bye and get ready. I pack all my stuff and head out. I see him in the lobby. We meet up and leave. We got to the house and I get my bags with the help of Nate. We enter the house to hear Corey raging at his game. I peek around the corner to see Colby making a sandwich. Nate follows me upstairs to my room to drop off my stuff. I hear footsteps come upstairs, but I decided to ignore it. I give Nate a hug, and once we were about to leave, we see Colby in the doorway. Hey, Nate begins to say before he got cut off by Colby. Who's this, Emma? Colby says in an irritated way. Why are you so worried about it? Go talk to the other girl you were kissing, I say. Nate tried getting past Colby, but he got pushed back by Colby. Emma, tell me now, who is this? Colby yells, Nate. His name is Nate. Are you happy now? He's my friend who I met when I was at the hotel, I answer. Get out, Colby scolded at Nate. Stop being mean, I say in defense of Nate. We walk past Colby and we say our goodbyes. I go upstairs to put my stuff away just to run into an angry Colby. He gives me the desk stare and runs back downstairs. I roll my eyes and get situated. After everything, I put in my headphones and listen to music. Colby comes in the room completely ignoring me and sits on his chairs and starts editing. I giggle at the thought of him being mad at me for having a guy friend. You think it's funny, huh? He says sarcastically. Yeah, I do. I said in a petty tone. You shouldn't do that, Emma. You know I have trust issues, he said in a very cold tone. Oh, wow. You kissed another girl behind my back and I can't have a guy friend, I said. He sounded dumb. (laughs) Drew? I'm sorry, I told you this. Just please forgive me, please, he said sadly. Fine, you're lucky I love you. I sigh. He smiled at me. I love you too, he said as he climbed into the bed. We cuddled together and fell asleep. Chapter 7. I wake up to the sound of my phone ringing. It was Nate. I pick it up. Hey, Nate, I said. Good morning, Emma. How'd you sleep? He asked in a hyper manner. It was okay, I guess, I said, very tired. 
that's not too good. I was wondering if you wanted to hang out today. If you're not busy, your boyfriend can come with us if he wants, Nate said. I thought about it for a minute. Yeah, sure. What time? I asked. Is five okay? I wasn't doing anything all day, so I said yes, and we hung up. The current time was 9.59, so I get up to make breakfast. As I'm making the waffles, I feel hands wrap around my waist. It was Colby. Good morning, beautiful, he says in a deep, raspy voice. Good morning, baby, I say, smiling. What do you want to do today? He asks. I take a deep breath in. Nate and I are hanging out today, I said, putting the waffles on the plate. Colby takes a sharp inhale, grabs his plate, then went to the living room. Baby... You can come if you want to, I said, trying to make him less upset. He looks up at me and nods his head yes. Hours later, time, four o'clock. Colby, start getting ready, I tell him. Right now, I'm brushing my hair and putting on my outfit. Okay, he responded back. Around 4.45, we hear a knock on the door. It was Nate. Hey, Nate, I give him a big hug. I look over to see Colby roll his eyes and look back at the TV. Hey, Emma, how have you been? Nate asked, pulling away. I've been good. How about you? I responded with a smile. Oh, I've just been going through a lot. That's why I came here to hang out with you. Oh, well, come sit down with me and Colby. I said, grabbing his wrist and pulling him to the couch where Colby was. Colby looks at my hand, holding wrist, Nate. That didn't make any sense. Colby looks at my hand, holding Nate's wrist and looks back up at me with a weird face. I look back at him with a what kind of face and he shakes his head. Hey, Colby, Nate says, smiling. It was a weird smile, almost like a fake smile. Hey, Colby responded with a smile, the same smile Nate had on his face. Do you boys want something to drink? I say, trying to break their staring contest. Yes, of course, Nate said, looking in my eyes. I looked down with a burning sensation on my face. I was blushing. Yeah, whatever, I'll just have a water, Colby says, looking at the TV. Something's wrong. Same, Nate says, still looking at me. I go over to the kitchen and get the boys a water. I can feel a pair of eyes on me. I turn around only to see Nate staring me down. I blush a little and head back over to the couch. I give the boys their water and get on my phone. It's cold, don't you think? Nate said. Colby looked over at him in an irritated way. Yeah, a little. Can you get me a blanket? I asked. Of course, Nate says with a smirk. Get two, Colby states with a very stone voice. Nate gets up and grabs the blankets, but only comes back with one. I look at Colby, who is very upset. He takes a huge deep breath and grabs the blanket. Nate puts the blanket over me and him and lays his head on my shoulder. I felt very awkward at the moment and looked at Colby. He's angry. Are you okay? I ask Colby in a soft tone. Of, of course he's not okay. I'm fine, he sternly responds. Are you sure? Yes, he almost yells, making me flinch. I hate being yelled at. I'll either cry or get really angry. I decided to calm myself. I go upstairs and change into my pajamas. I wear a cute baby blue tank top with blue shorts. I head downstairs and sit back down. Three hours pass. The movie was over and everyone had gotten very tired. Colby and Nate had been giving each other weird looks, but I decided to ignore it. When it was time to go, me and Nate gave each other one last hug before it was time to go. He hugged me pretty tight and kind of lifted me off the ground because I'm short, but Colby wasn't too happy. Okay, seriously, Colby yells, making me flinch. Dude, chill. I'm just saying bye to my best friend, Nate responded in a petty way. Guys, calm down. What do you mean, calm down? He's been flirting with you the whole time. Have you not noticed? Colby basically screamed at me. I wanted to cry, but I held it in. I'm not flirting with her, bro. Relax, Nate says. Nate was definitely up to something. Get out now, Colby said in a calm tone. Nate stays quiet and still. I said get out, Colby yells. I'm not going anywhere. You're not the boss of me, Nate said in a very bossy kind of way. Out, Colby scolded. Nate goes in Colby's face. Did you hear what I just said? Nate attempted to say but gets pushed back by Colby. Boys, stop. It is not that serious, I said, too scared to get any closer. Nate pushes back and Colby pins Nate to the ground while punching him. Somehow Nate is still getting punches in. It's a fair fight. I pushed Colby off and they both stood up, fist balled. I said stop and I'm not going to say it again and you both are still fighting over a stupid thing. Grow up. I yell. I was over it. He's flirting with you. Cole Robert Brock. Is that his full name? I think I just got the ick. I told you once and I'm not going to say it again. It's dumb. Get over it. I grabbed his shirt. Calm down. At this point, I was furious. Nate, leave. Colby, go in the kitchen. They both nod and go to where I tell them. I said bye to Nate and headed upstairs. I really wanted to relax, so I decided to call Kat. The house was empty. It was just you and Colby. She didn't answer the phone, so I decided to just go to sleep. It was already almost 10, so why not? 
As I'm drifting to sleep, I feel a pair of arms around me. I ignored it and fell asleep. And that's where we're going to end it today. This video is going to be a little bit shorter than my other ones, but I am freaking exhausted today. And if any of you guys saw my announcement from last week, I did actually create my own Wattpad account. I am cringing at myself on the inside, but I do have a Wattpad account and I have been uploading a Colby Rock fan fiction. So make sure and check that out. Um, it'll be linked in the description box below. I'm thinking about doing a like non-mature version of my book because I also wanted to do an alternate ending. So I think I might do that and put it on Wattpad. So make sure and follow me over there so you guys can stay up to date. So far, I think I have like seven parts posted to the Colby Brock story. Make sure and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it so I know to keep making these videos. Leave me a comment down below and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in next week's video.